out now. Get out now. Run, run, run for your life. I'm Martin Sargent. Clearly, I'm the guy. Duh, I'm pretty much the man. Get with it. Yo, what's up? That's red, man. What's up? Never seen anything like that. Blingo. Blingo? Unscrewed. You found Unscrewed, the show that got a letter printed in Penthouse Forum. I'm Martin Sage, and here she is. The only reason you've tuned in tonight, rated the hottest woman on Tech TV by two out of five viewers, The Swish. Wait, two out of, two out of five? Two out of five. That That's pretty it? good. That's 40%. Well, you got Morgan, you got Kat, you got Osumi does gone, I guess. Wait, what, but you got some competition. What, I'm sorry, Martin. Is what you're saying right now is that those two are harder than me? I mean, you, I can expect I'm not saying them, anything. But... I'm saying two out of five viewers. <laughs> Anyway, I'm starting to get really pissed off. Maybe you are too, these viewers out there. They're like now the, the nine or ten people that watch this show. They keep writing in and dissing my hair, You're saying terribly mean spirited things about her. That is so odd. It is. It's not, it's, it not only hurts me, but also my, my team of hardworking stylists, otherwise known as Joey the intern. <laughs> hey, check out a couple of the emails that the, the wet sucks in our audience have sent in about my glorious flowing locks. And these are real emails. Uh, uh, Dear Martin, do you style your hair by placing a greasy family-sized bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken on your head and then running around the block to get sweaty? That's ridiculous. It's, just, it's like not showering. That's the secret. It's no, not showering. No, I do shower. Oh. Here's another one. The only funny thing about Unscrewed is the dead animal rotting on Martin's head. <laughs> Martin should be scalped and have it host the show. Okay. Well, we tried that. We tried that with a dead armadillo. We tried that already. Work. Uh, one more. Two questions. Does Martin's hair have its own dressing room? And uh, who gets paid more, Martin or his hair? I can answer that. Uh, Martin's hair does, in fact, have its own dressing room. However, it's getting smaller and smaller every year. <laughs> <laughs> my hair is on the Atkins diet. <laughs> Actually, my hair does have a life of its own. And in fact, it woke me up at 4.30 in the morning practicing its nunchucks. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense, wow. does it? So my hair still. always carries a comb in the back of its acid wash jeans. But whatever, people. What is wrong with my hair, Laura? I mean, can you explain this to me? I think it looks pretty good. How is it different than the quaffs that the other big uh, Hollywood heartthrobs have? Uh, like who, for example? Well, like, like Ashton Kutcher. This guy right here, this guy could be my long-lost twin brother. It's the exact same haircut. He probably uses Pantene and blows a dry, just like me. I guess the only difference is that he's, like, hot. No, come on, Laura. The only difference between his hair and my hair is his hair gets him this hair. Ah. Yeah, oh, right there. Yeah. Of course, uh, bald-ass Bruce Willis had four kids with that old bag's hair, so whatever. Here's an impression of Ashton if he were me. Dude, where's my rating? <laughs> ah, but, Demi, you know, if things don't work out between you and Ashton, send me an email, because I like older women, too. Uh, in fact, Betty White, if you're watching, send me an email. <laughs> I'd hit any one of the Golden Girls, Rue McClanahan, Estelle Getty, B. Arthur. Let's convert. I'll be your boy toy. We'll be Hollywood's next sizzling couple du jour. It'll be awesome. That would help anyway. us with the ratings. I think if you started going out with B. Arthur, boom. Or maybe done. I should just get a perm like them. Hey, on tonight's show, we've got magician Brian Brushwood here. He's going to teach me how to eat fire, as if my diet isn't hazardous enough already. Plus, uh, we've got Perry the product tester here to play a little game he calls Failure Mode. The contestant, very hot, former girl gone wired, Christina Lindley. And if she loses, she'll be taken off her shirt. Yeah. We're going to try to rig this. And then uh, meet our newest girl gone wired who poses with food in the new cookbook, Caveman in the Kitchen. Yabba dabba do me. All right, Laura, you, you know how much I love comic books, right? right? You yeah. know, Crimson Commando, Black Lightning, Garfield, Betty and Veronica. <laughs> so when I heard about the big comic book convention down in San Diego, I just had to go. A little known fact about it, Comic Con is a dating mecca. Yeah. So X Plays Morgan Webb and I headed down there to pimp each other out to the other comic fans in search of love. And I have to say, I looked rather dapper dressed as Jughead Jones. Check it out. Run for your life. Comic Con. Where all the hot people are. This last right here, Morgan, she came here trying to pick up some, some dudes. Would you be interested in her? Why not? Oh, is it your woman under there? Yeah. Oh, oh, here we go. You want to go out with me? Because I'm here cruising, man. Sure, why not? You look like a fun guy. Oh! I have a friend, Martin, who really likes the schoolgirl thing. You're pretty cute. I mean, uh, you got those big, dark eyes and nice set of teeth. Uh, I don't know, you're kind of flat-chested. You look like a lot of fun. How you doing? 
I'm fine. There's that whole evil warrior sort of death bot thing going on, which is kind of kinky. He dressed up like Jughead to come here. I know. That's sad. Now, you guys look like you could kick Martin's ass. It looks like Martin's ass has been kicked many times in his life, actually. Ah! <laughs> so when you rip it off, it doesn't take your areolas with it? No. What superhero would you consider yourself in the sack? Like, uh, The Flash, maybe? No, I get that joke and I resent it. What about you? Uh, what about me? Uh, probably Aquaman. What do you have to offer, Morgan? What are your top three qualities? Well, first, these good looks, you know, this face and this body, and, you know, this good mouth. Did you find any hot chicks for me? Not that we go out with you. Do you find any uh, hot guys for me? No, not that I'd let you go out with. Well, you know what? Shazam! <laughs> yeah! You know, Morgan Webb, Morgan Webb is a much better kisser than you are, Laura. I don't know how you would know that. <laughs> oh, really eat the thing. Hey, if you want to see that uh, Uber babe Morgan Webb and find out why superhero video games always seem to suck ass, check out the continuing coverage of Comic-Con on X-Play. That airs immediately after this show. And I might just go check that out over there tonight. I might, I might stop really? by X-Play, yeah. And you can see Morgan on X-Play every night at 11.30 p.m. Eastern, just like I do and afterwards. Coming up next, magician Brian Brushwood will teach me how to eat fire. Stick around to see if I go through with it, or I think I'm going to wuss out. I don't know if I can do this. And musical guests, the pandas are here with a number that just makes my heart sing. Can you boys take a spring, please? Hey, our next guest is a magician who can do more tricks with fire than even convicted arsonist Laura Swisher. A legend. <laughs> and now with a new book, The Professional's Guide to Fire Eating, he's out to teach uh, the average Joe, including yours truly, some of his secrets of how to hold a book on television. That's right. Please welcome Brian Brushwood. Hey, Brian, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, Martin. How have you been? I'm doing all right. So before you were making a living as a magician, you actually made a living doing computer tech support, right? That's true. That is true. For an extended warranty company, and then I tested video games for a living, actually. Wow. Yeah. Not even David Copperfield could fix the bugs in Windows, though, huh, Brian? That is true. <laughs> That's a funny <laughs> computer joke there. But now you're all about uh, magic and eating fire. You make a living at this? Yeah, actually, I do all kinds of wild stuff. I eat fire, I break 30 pound bricks on my head, I hammer a four and a half inch nail on my nose, yeah. and I tour all over the United States to colleges performing at uh, major events. And you're teaching other people how to do it. The book, The Professional's Guide to Eating Fire. Yep. This thing, I gotta say though, it begins with a three page disclaimer. All the warnings, the dangers, the risks. I mean, how did you get this thing published? This is so dangerous. Well, actually, I was aware that uh, that it was going to be difficult to get published, cause, mainly because it's such a narrow market, and so I ended up yeah. actually self-publishing. I uh, handled, uh, we, I wrote everything out, and then I, uh, uh, we took over a thousand photos. We laid it all out with a desktop imaging program, and actually called a printer up myself and uh, did the publishing. Aren't you worried that some kid's going to buy this book or watch this show? God forbid, try to eat fire because you do this, and if you breathe in, all that kerosene and, and flame That's goes right. into your lungs, and you're done, man. Yeah, That's not, to it. not to mention the fact that the that the flames itself are over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and that'll wow. singe your throat just like that. So you're not worried about that? Some kid's going to screw up his life because he's trying to do a parlor trick. No <laughs> well, that's, offense. Well, that's, that's why we take all the security precautions. That's why we have the usage license agreement on the front that when you break the shrink wrap, you agree to, to all the following terms and conditions. That's paper, The three right. pages We're at the beginning. We're talking about lungs. No, that flesh. is true. That is true. And that's why, that's why actually I wrote the book is because there are a lot of people out there doing outrageous stuff who have no clue and no business out there playing with fire because they don't know what they're doing. They're not doing it safely. And because before now, the only book out there on fire eating was a little 60-page leaflet mm -hmm. that was horribly inaccurate and didn't have any of the safety right. stuff we had. I would imagine that there's a lot of women out there who want to eat fire. So I have to ask you, is, um, are there a lot of calories? I mean, <laughs> are there more calories in a, in a you know, big flame versus a snack well? It depends on the fuel, actually. You got to, like, if you're going to do a shot for the, you know, for the fire blaster, you spit that right. stuff out. You use an alcohol that could be a lot of calories in the alcohol. So you use kerosene, very low calories. Ladies? 
There you have it. So, can, we, can we see some of the stuff that yeah, you do with the fire? Why don't you get up quick. here and, and show us some of your skills, man? Absolutely. And I'm yeah, going to just sit back. Okay, he's dipping it in the Coleman, <laughs> Coleman thermos filled with kerosene now. Or whatever. Jesus, Brian, yeah, get in my eyes, right, right, man. Got your attention? Now, the concept of resistance to fire is actually one as old as history itself. But the first written account of a fire eater occurs in 1607 when Sir, Tem or Sir Henry Wotton wrote of a sailor who could eat fire as though it were candy. Fascinating. Put it down deeper. <laughs> oh, my Ooh. God. He's, he's got <laughs> the fire coming out of his mouth. I can here feel the go. heat from here. We'll try two at once. Here. Two at once. Oh, my God. This is like some girl's gone wire trick. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. No, I'm sorry. See? He always sucked it all in. Timing. I'm sorry. Bad timing. I'm sorry. All right. Real quick. Here he goes. Oh, he's got two in his mouth at once. There we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Holy yeah. smokes. Can anyone do this? Can anyone breathe fire? With the proper training, anyone can eat fire, actually. And actually, we spent the day together, and you tried to teach me how to do it. Now, we brought a video camera along. Let's take a look at the clip. It's too fast, too fast, too fast, too fast, too slow. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Ah. A few little tricks, like tossing the flame from one to another. That's it. That's it. You just did it. The way you close your mouth around it, just like that. You just go like. I did it. <laughs> All right. Let that tongue out. Go in. Start exhaling. You set it on the tongue, and then take it off. That's it. That's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> We're in Laura Swisher's kitchen, by the way, and she's not here, so I say, "F the fire game, and let's go through drawers." <laughs> Yeah, you see that? You see that? That's it how good. it's done, man. It was. All right, let's eat some fire All right, together. Let's do this oh stuff. my All right, God, go. I can't believe I'm Both doing this again. Ready right? on three. One, two, ready one, two, three. Oh! Oh! Yeah! I feel so oh, alive. Yeah. That was good. Not bad, huh? Now remember, people, do not try this at home. This is very right. dangerous. I spent the whole day with Brian. I read the entire book like five times. Yeah, you were very It's thorough. extremely dangerous because if you suck this into your lungs, it's, it's dead, man. That's right. It's dead, all right? Brian Brushwood, thank you so much for coming yeah, by you, and Martin. teaching me how to eat fire. Absolutely. God, now I'm going to get the chicks, too. Hey, for more of Brian's Bizarre Magic, check out his site at caneatfire.com or schwood.com or Brian Brushwood.com. Brushwood yeah. There you go. You get all the links to all that stuff. TechTV.com slash unscrew. Don't do it at home. And don't go anywhere because there's a very good chance we're going to see to get this woman to take <laughs> off her shirt. I'm excited. I can't even talk. Stick around. <laughs> It's time for two of my favorite things, Perry, our staff scientist, and playing games. We've combined the two and come up with a surefire winner. We call it failure mode. Now, Perry has concocted a completely ridiculous stress test for a tech product, and we're going to ask our very sexy netcam guests to predict if the product survived the test. The twist you ask, well, if netcam guest correctly predicts the outcome, we'll send her the product as a prize. If she fails, she's got to take her shirt off and unscrew it, all right? Yeah. All right, our yeah. NetCam contestant is the very pretty and vivacious Christina Lindley. She's also one of our past Girls Gone Wired. Hey, Christina. Hey. So how does it feel to have been a Girl Gone Wired? Uh, it's great. I love it. Yeah, I bet like when you go to the malls and stuff, like everyone flocks to you and wants autographs. <laughs> Especially if I go into like a radio shack or something. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so you understand the rules. You understand how we play failure mode. Definitely, yeah. Okay, and now are you anyway in need of a combination MP3 player and laser pointer? Uh, not really, but hey. Just shut up. <laughs> Let's go along with it, all right, Christina? Now hold on a second, because Perry's about to explain the product test. Perry, what stroke of genius did you come up with this time? Well, as you're aware, Martin, the uh, Adora Music um, combination laser pointer uh, MP3 player is a highly durable piece of solid-state technology. So I needed something very loud and very phallic to test the product. So I decided to take it on a little trip with a rocket. That's a big black rocket. Indeed. We took it out to Unscrewed's secret uh, test facility near 3Com Park. 
and launched it into the air at a speeds exceeding 100 miles an hour. Wow, and we've caught this entire tape, uh, this entire test on tape. Christina, are you ready to see the product being tested? Yes, I am. All right, let's watch it. There you have it, Christina. So, you saw the tape. What's your prediction? Does the MP3 player still work or not? You know what? I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to say that it does still work. You're going to say it does still work. Yeah. Laura, do you, th you concur with that? What do you think? I, yeah, I'll concur with that. Okay, you both <laughs> say it does still work. Now, just to recap, the MP3, if the MP3 player doesn't work, Christina, you're going to take your shirt off, right? If yeah, you get it I need wrong. to get to see my bra. Okay, and, and Laura, are you going to do that too? Yeah, yeah absolutely. All right. All <laughs> you and me, Laura. All right, yeah, if, if the thing does not work, you're going to take your shirt off. Okay, Perry, can you uh, demonstrate to see if it still works or not? Um, Martin, this would be a, this would be a dead stick. All right, Christina. I'm very sorry, but you have chosen unwisely. The thing no longer works anymore, and I'm afraid you're going to have to remove your shirt on Unscrewed. Well, I think considering the fact that you took a hammer to it, you're going to have to remove your shirt with me. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm taking All my right, shirt. Right, 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 right. In three. Let's do it. Go ahead. Okay. Come on. Another button. I got one strap. Can you see me? I didn't think you could see what I was going on here. I can see you right now. This is so unscripted. It's unscripted for you to take a hammer to it, too. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, take the shirt off. Hurry up. Work I'm with me. I'm almost naked. I want to see your shirt off. How's that? Oh, okay. All right. So let's see it. Stand up a little bit. Well, you still got something on. Oh, I got my bra on. All right. There you have it, everyone. I think I just been had. Yeah. Hey, thanks for playing, Christina. It's been great having you on the show, and thanks for being a Girl Gone Wire, too. And people can find out more about you at ChristinaLinley.net, correct? That's correct. Yeah, thanks, you, what, Christina. How thanks do you think for I, making me look at that. How do you think I look without a shirt on, Christina? No. This Stop it. Yes. <laughs> All right, Stop thanks, it. Perry. Thanks, Christina. You have done a service to science today, my friend. Great job, as always. Always happy to help, Martin. All right. I'd like Travolta. Hey, coming up after the break, we'll play a game of strip trivia. Oh, stripping? What? Stick around. But first, we'll have a brief reading from one of your blogs. June 10th. Dear Blag, there's this bitch on my floor. I saw her in the dining hall, and they threw bread at us. Stupid she-man bitch. I hate her. I want to burn her hair and throw her out the window. And if she's still not dead, I want to kick her and spit on her until she does die. Angry. The end. P.S. I keep getting the feeling that I need to sneeze, but it goes away. How annoying. Love's in the air, it's time for Girls Gone Wired. Hey, uh, yeah, tonight's babe is a pretty, pretty, pretty girl named Kimberly Fisher. She's been a finalist in many beauty pageants such as Miss Budweiser Ring Girl and has appeared on such calendars as Lingerie Dreams and College Girls of Las Vegas. Because when I think hot chicks, I think UNLV. Besides modeling, Kimberly has also acted in a few indie films such as Messed in the Head where she plays a lesbian that falls for a very feminine guy. And it's nice to know that in Hollywood, my dreams can still come true. 
But despite all her success, Kimberly has yet to fulfill one fantasy, to do it on a balcony in public. I don't know if my fire escape counts as a balcony or the drunk peddlers hanging out beneath it qualifies the public, but Kimberly, you can come over anytime. And uh, you've probably seen Kim in one of the many TV shows, movies, calendars, and commercials he's done, including one for Jägermeister. But tonight, she's just a girl gone wired, and that's enough for me. Now, speaking of Jaeger, when I was in college, we had our drinking games, you know, beer pong, asshole, diaper night. But I always like to make believe that the girls in the sorority down the road spend a great deal of time playing naked drinking games. Yeah, my fantasy. Uh, the sorority sisters huddled around a Commodore 64, getting naked, curious about 16-bit graphics in each other's hot young bodies, playing games at the website iundress.com. You want to play? Diaper? <laughs> yeah, what? Type, let's just move on. Yeah, your college education might finally pay off at iundress.com. You're rewarded for knowledge. If you get the trivia questions right, you get a halfway decent striptease. All right, let's choose our rating, shall we? And we don't want to undress the big black guys, so let's take the women. And why don't we go with Nicole, all right? Now, to undress, answer this, Laura. Which U.S. president founded the National Park Service? Uh, Franklin Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt, Calvin Coolidge, or Martin Sheen? What do you think? Franklin. Franklin Roosevelt. Uh, no, that's incorrect. Uh, no, it's not. No, no that's it's, absolutely it's, correct. It's Teddy Roosevelt. This game actually, is wrong. It's Teddy. Which Nobel Prize winner said, "Man has lost the capacity to foresee and to forestall. He will end by destroying the earth." Neruda. Albert Schweitzer. Albert Schweitzer is correct. Very good. And we're getting more naked. One more. Which Spanish painter created cubism, or is at least credited with it? Because, Pablo. Sorry. Picasso. Picasso. That's right. Now she's done her skivvies. One more. God, I'm just going to give it to you because I want to see her naked. There you go. And there we have it. We've learned something. And we got to see a little TNA, too. And now if I can only find the use of that when I was taking calculus, it would be all right. Hey, that's all the time we got. Go to iundress.com if you want to play that game. And I want to thank our guests tonight, Brian Bushwood, our girl gone wired. And, of course, uh, what was her name? Christina Lindley, and of course, you homies for watching. Thanks so much, everyone. Good night. <laughs>
But please come and see the show anyway. Tonight's show, oh my God, it's like a lucid dream. We've got Tracy Lords, the former underage porn star, discussing her new life and her new book. And uh, that nutter Scary Gary is back with an idea that might just revolutionize television. Plus, tonight's Girls Gone Wired believed her family's house was built on an Indian graveyard. She later died in an episode of Beverly Hills 90210. <laughs> I really miss that show. So uh, let's move on. Are you stuck in that same old Matrix rut? Well, my next friend sees the code, has been contacted by the one, and makes the Wachowski brothers look like a couple of Hollywood dilettantes. He's Gerald O'Donnell, and he's here to teach us about psychic self-defense, mind control, and remote influencing your way out of the rabbit hole. Welcome to the show, Gerald. Uh, hello, everybody. Hey. <laughs> so we've discussed remote viewing on this program before. How does remote influencing differ? Okay, remote viewing is the ability that you have to uh, connect to your subconscious mind. And uh, as uh, many people have realized, the subconscious mind of one is connected to the subconscious mind of others, yes. and then you collect information. So how long have you been doing this, this remote influence? I mean, can you really influence you people? Thing? Since the moment I was born. From the moment you were born. So you yeah, didn't, like, major my, in this when in I, college. When my, when my parents, uh, you know, my parents were watching my crib, I knew how to influence. Can, can you really influence people, like, get people to do what you want them to do from a distance? Is that what we're talking about yes. here? Yes. Really? What's the craziest thing you've had someone do? Yeah. Um, well, we don't really try to change their behavior. We try to uh, yeah. to it, make them change their behavior in a way by which they, they'll be happier and heal. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So th this is all connected to the Matrix. I mean, we've all seen the Matrix movie. What's your connection to the Matrix? Same as yours. What is that? I don't know. Okay, I, don't I saw know. the what movie. I'm lost. You, right? what, the Matrix as portrayed in the movie is really what they call the quantum soup. It's the, uh, the, all the possibilities that you can choose from uh -huh. and uh, what people think is fate, which in reality is not. The more connected you are to the matrix, the more fate plays a role to, in your life. So How many times you did you see that movie? How many times did you see this movie? Yeah. Uh, I would say about three or four times. Three or four times. Do you think you could take Keanu? <laughs> yeah. So you say that I you've been download, yeah. you've been contacted by the one. Who is the okay, one? The and one what did he tell the you? One, I, you know, I don't like to call any supreme power or high power by any name. So I, I'd better call it the one. Yeah, but it's capitalized. It, yeah. Well, exactly. <laughs> I capitalize it. Yes. Yeah. It's appropriate. Is but there because a two? I don't want I don't want to get into hot water. Do you understand <laughs> that? So so what is this business about the seal of Solomon? Seal of Solomon. Seal of Solomon is basically when you connect the energy of the earth, which is uh, the energy which is sitting upon, uh, and you bring it up. Uh, in Indian lore, they call this the Kundalini. Uh -huh. And you connect it to the mas masculine uh, fire energy that comes from above. And when these right. two connections are made, you get, a third connect you get a third energy coming out of you, which is very powerful. I'm getting a lot of connections right here, and you've got to excuse my yeah. ignorance, but okay. you talk a lot what about... What I'm trying to say is that your, your power is very strong when you do this as far as energizing your thoughts. And when you energize a thought, you will manifest that thought for good or for bad. Uh -huh. So if you have a fear thought, that fear will be manifested very fast. You talk a lot about a the thought. vibratory self, the vibratory self. Does this involve the Hitachi magic wand? <laughs> Yeah, well, it's very similar. You know, if you look at a TV, all the, uh, before, the, before it, you can watch the TV, it's only a wave. You understand that? Mm -hmm. It's an electromagnetic wave that's, 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 that's coming into your, your tube, and you see it as, a, as an image. So that's what your brain does. The world is really a world of vibration, uh -huh. electromagnetic vibration. Are, are you remotely influencing me right now to, no, to do I a really crappy I interview? Dare. I wouldn't dare, especially if Tracy Lord is coming in. Oh, no. Have you ever been psychically attacked by someone? Someone tried to invade your self-defense shield? All right. Uh, I, I don't like to use the word psychically attacked. There are some, some people who have negative type of thoughts or intents, and, and it, it, it's a good thing to have a certain shield around you, yes. Yeah, okay. Well, thank you very much, Gerald. Uh, be careful out there, all right? Okay. Yeah. Hey, you too can become a remote influencer. Just head on to techtv.com slash unscrewed for all the links. Fascinating stuff. I don't understand I, I, a damn I, thing he I said. Laura, stop, stop trying to psychically stop. influence me. <laughs> Gerald, stop controlling Laura. Hey, after the break, Tracy Lords bears it all.
Yeah, baby, God, that watermelon looks so very ripe. Pepito, give me a cold drink, boy. But first, tonight's musical guest is one very horny Frenchman. Oh. Notorious graduate of the porn industry, an underage star whose career was spiraling out of control when the FBI stepped in and rescued her. Now she's written an autobiography called Underneath It All, where she comes clean about her past. Please welcome actress, author, singer, and sci-fi heroine, Tracy Lords. Hey, Tracy. How are you? I'm great. So, 35. I mean, you're still very young. Most people wait until they're a little bit older to write their autobiography. Why did you decide to do it now? Well, I've had a heck of a journey, and I think that enough pa time has passed now. It's been 17 years since I was a child porn star, and there's been so much about me written and said that just isn't true. That, you know, I wanted to set the record straight, and I think that um, this perhaps shed some light on a side of that business that people don't see very often. How difficult has it been to overcome that whole porn star image? It's been really difficult. You know, my rock bottom for me was in 1986 when the FBI um, basically broke down my door in my apartment in Torrance and, you know, I made my exit from the world of porn and I decided to, you know, change my life and start all over and that I wanted to be a legitimate singer and songwriter and actress in Hollywood. And it's taken me about 17 years, you know, to really do that and to get enough perspective to where I could come out and talk about this now. Yeah, and you've achieved so much in that time. I mean, you recently won the uh, uh, Best Actress Award for comedy for the movie Chump Change at the Comedy Festival. That must have been like sweet revenge for you in some ways. Well, it was really wonderful because Billy Crystal also presented me with that award, and he's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. I think the, the movie is a really sweet little movie. It's called Chump Change, and it's going to be out next year from Merrimax, and I think that it's wonderful. You know, the, the beginning of my autobiography, it really is from cradle till present, and it's not a porn book. It certainly deals with those years um, between 15 and 18 when I was in that world, but it really talks about, you know, how a small town girl from Ohio um, found home life so awful uh, the things that happened to me when I was a kid, the, you know, the rape at 10 and just this really tragic terrible, childhood. Terrible, terrible childhood, this yeah, coal mining town in Ohio. Yeah, how it led me to the streets and ultimately to porn, but really how I made it out of that and changed my life and had a really wonderful, amazing career in spite of it. In, in your book, you come out, of course, very hard against hardcore porn. Nowadays, you can't go on the internet without being bombarded left and right with these hardcore porn images. What do you think of the proliferation of pornography and the ease of getting at it on the internet now? I think it's pretty shocking. I don't know about you, but in the morning when I check my junk mail and there's all kinds of offers for, you know, everything under the sun, it, it can be a bit um, intrusive, I think is the right word. But I mean, when I was in porn, it was a completely different time. 84, 85, 86, people were still choosing between VHS and beta. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't have sort of the mainstreaming of pornography that goes on today. So it's, it was it's definitely all changed. a different time. It's all changed. There's so it's many more outlets changed, now yeah. for pornography. And your book reads very much like a cautionary tale. What do you say to young men and women? Women who see the money that could be made in online porn, other forms of pornography, to, to not get in that. I think with my book, one of the hard things about writing it was to really be able to look at this and you know tell my story without any kind of a, a slant mm -hmm. or you know preaching or being self-righteous or saying okay I'm a nun now. I just wanted to tell about my experience and what happened to me. If anything, my advice would be to parents because um, prostitution, child prostitution, is such a huge epidemic in this country today, and it just goes back to really um, you know instilling in your children that you, they have to be able to trust you and come to you and you know just the importance of self. Let's get a little geeky here now. Lacking with me. Let's get a little geeky. This is Tech TV. You've become sort of a sci-fi heroine. You've starred as an alien hunter in the, the sci-fi channel series First Wave. What draws you to that sci-fi genre? The roles tend to be a lot better in sci-fi, at least the ones that I've come across. I love playing Jordan Radcliffe in First Wave just because she was, you know, uh, strong and vulnerable and very physical with the martial arts and what have you. And so it was a really nice, rounded character. I'm attracted to all different types of acting, whether it be comedy like Chump Change mm -hmm. or, you know, far out sort of John Waters movies or, you know, television. I've never really put the limits there. You recently made an appearance at the big Dungeons and Dragons convention. Gen Con, maybe the biggest, geekiest event of the year. How is that, meeting all those geeks? You know, I, I just really embrace the inner geek in me. <laughs> what can I tell <laughs> Do you? Do you play Dungeons and Dragons, Tracy Lords? No, but I had a lot of people willing to teach me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you did. 
What was your favorite I was, booth? I was afraid of the whole role playing thing. You were? It's pretty sure. frightening, isn't it? I mean, those people are whack, aren't they? Well, I don't really know, but I, I, I had enough on my plate at the time that I, my, I was a little kind of, um, um, I was a big scaredy cat. <laughs> <laughs> you should have been, believe me. You have a website, tracylords.com. How involved are you with the site? Oh, very involved. You still, even though you're out of pornography, ago. you have a lot of fairly scantily clad images up there. You know, in 86, when that all happened, I had to decide whether or not, you know, where I wanted to go. The last time I was actually, you know, nude on film was in 1987, mm -hmm. where I was topless in a movie. I've never gone that way. I, I assume that you're referring to my swimsuit pictures. Yes. I think that that's a, you know, that's a pretty far cry from porn. No, I didn't say porn. I said scantily. Yeah, okay, But I take whatever. your point. <laughs> hey, Tracy, thanks so much for talking with us today. Thanks for having me. All right, the book is underneath it all. For more information on Tracy, the book, and autographed merchandise, check out our website at tracylords.com or find all the links at techtv.com slash unscrewed. We'll be right back. And now it's time for another moment in NASA history. I know you have to add some additional docking segments while you're up there. How difficult is that going to be? Now you listen to me, you sick son of a I told you about asking about them docking segments. So, uh, you know, I didn't even realize he was still on the payroll, but our scary Gary is back on the streets with another crackpot business idea. This time, he's trying his hand at the cable TV business, which, in my experience, isn't going to get him anywhere. Check it out. Five hundred. You just gotta love this. When an automobile bites them. This is the all-new Flip TV. Have you seen this? You want to check it out real fast? I'll start this right here. And what it is? It's a new TV network. All it does is flip through the channels. That sounds awful good. You know, all it does, you turn on this channel and it flips through the channels for you. That's it. That's all it does. Oh, that drive me. Oh, that drive me nuts. Thousand dollars of the coolest tech products around. Well, Once in a while, it stops for a couple minutes, like you were flipping through, and you stop for a minute or two, you know, and and then it go on. It's a good idea, but like most cable, they have that, and it's not. They have that, that thing that that scrolls. You know what I mean? Right. It's brought. It's brought to you by the same people who made that. Oh, really? Yeah. My and it's cable be, you know, company it's gonna... started giving me this. Mm -hmm. I would drop it. Oh, really? Good idea. Bad idea. Bad idea. Bad idea. Yeah, who wants to watch all those channels? Uh, well, it's like flipping through the channels, but they're doing it for you. Who is? Flip TV. I've got it! They continue to watch it. Your guys' eyes has, hasn't left yet, you know? Yeah. You turn on this channel, and all you it does just, is... You could just use the scan button on your remote yeah. control. Oh, great. Thanks a lot, Gary. <laughs> That's all this show needs is more competition, you know? <laughs> God, ratings aren't That's bad enough. Well, hey, now it's time to peep some pretties. Girls Gone Wired. Yeah! Tonight's babe was an obsession of almost every teenage boy of the 80s. Here's Rebecca Gayhart. She grew up in Pine Top, Kentucky, and later as a teen, she moved to New York where her southern accent made her sound freakish. A modeling agency did sign her, but told her to drop the accent if she wanted to make it into the business outside of Dukes of Hazard reunions. Rebecca took the advice and soon became the famous Noxima girl who later appeared in Beverly Hills 90210 and then in horror flicks such as Urban Legend, Scream 2, and 90210 High School Reunion. Her curly hair used to be a curse as she was nicknamed Bushhead, Cottonhead, Frizzhead, and Helmethead, but now she loves her hair, which is great because people think my hair looks like an undeveloped twin growing from the top of my head. <laughs> Rebecca says her lucky number is seven because there's seven days in the week and for every her every day is a lucky day. Especially Aww. today because she's our girl gone wired. You kind of have a bush head. No, I don't. What are you talking about? <laughs> All of that. Hey, stay tuned because we've got Tech TV's hottest woman up next. And she wants me something fierce. But first, everybody has a secret life. Here's a sneaky into Laura's. The double life of Laura Swisher. Every sidekick has a secret. All right, hello, and welcome to Unscrewed with Laura Swisher. I'm your host, Laura Swisher, and tonight we've got an amazing show for you. You guys are hey, uh, going Laura. Yeah. Uh, what the hell are you doing? I, I, you out. I thought. No, I, I, I'm here now. Oh. You, you get up out of my chair, please. <laughs> Thanks. 
You know, you know, you're you're doing you're doing a hell of a job. You, you're a really good sidekick. And shoot, I, you know, I got to run. There's that luncheon for television hosts. <laughs> hosts, yeah. We'll talk later. All right. Okay. Keep your eye on the ball. One day, Martin Sergeant. One day. Four years. And we're back. So uh, tonight's email presents a challenge. It says, all the guys here in the IT department can't decide who's the hottest woman on tech TV. Beautiful half Nubian queen Laura Swisher or Gen X video game playing Morgan Webb. Tell us why you, Laura, should be our IT department's hottest woman on tech TV and you could win a prize. Laura, what do you have to say? Why should I win? Um... <laughs> I think it's more a question of why Morgan shouldn't win. Now, uh, this is nothing personal, but the dirty little secret at Tech TV, which, by the way, everybody knows about... Oh, don't bring this up. ...is that Morgan abuses the elderly. <laughs> Sexually. I'm serious. God, well, I'm you gotta... se well, she does. She's a sexual predator, and I'm even afraid to bring my grandpa... Oh, my God! Morgan Webb! Did you... What did you have anything to do with this? Why would you tell people that? Who came up with that? Who's what sick oh, mind came up I with just, that? Because I just, you know what? It was this contest. I thought we were friends. <laughs> we're friends, but it's like you always have the best fans, the most fans, and I just want an IT department to like me. I have two fans. Cat fight, cat fight. One of them is my Sorry. mom. <laughs> oh, girl, you know, why should we care what they think anyway? Right? I, yeah. How I, cute do you think they are? You're right. You know what, why are they asking us who the hottest woman at Tech TV is? And they're going to give us a prize? You know what? Ah. We should put the question back at them. We should have a contest. Who is the hottest IT department in the country? Mm. But in fact, you know what? It's settled. It is official. The women of Tech TV are now officially taking submissions in the contest to decide who has the hottest IT department in the country. So if you guys have the balls and the abs, send us an email with a group picture of your department. The hottest IT department will win a fabulous prize. So send pics to unscrewed at techtv.com and put the IT studs in the subject line. And by the way, don't bring any ringers from the marketing department. Because we'll know. We'll know. Tanned blonde people, you're, they are not in your department. And we'll be waiting for you, boys. That's right. Well, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. I feel like I just watched a crappy episode of The View. <laughs> Hey, uh, a big sweaty thanks to our hot friends Tracy Lords, Gerald O'Donnell, and Morgan Webb. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, everyone, good luck out at the bar tonight. See you later. Jesus, I gotta get to work. I'm Martin Sargent. Clearly, I'm the guy. Duh. Yeah, I'm pretty much the man. Get with it. Yo, what's up? That's red, man. What's up? I've never seen anything like that. Blingo. Blingo? I'm screwed. And welcome to Unscrewed, the show that spent its birthday sitting alone at a Denny's in Reno drinking Mr. Pibb. No. I'm Martin Sargent, and how can you explain the swish? How? Yeah. I, I want to know. How? I don't know. That's what I'm asking the people. So my birthday was last week, which uh, really sucked because there was nothing good on TV that night. You spent your birthdays watching TV? Well, yeah. Last week on my birthday, I saw this really kick-ass episode of Murder, She Wrote. Uh -huh. And then I pretended that Angela Lansbury was, like, jumping out of my imaginary birthday cake, and she was just filthy with chocolate frosting. Oh, my God! I totally knew that was Matlock! Best birthday ever! But I'd like to thank everyone in the viewing audience who sent me birthday wishes. And by everyone, I'm referring to only one person, oh. Dave, my gay stalker. The only person who sent me a birthday wish. You remember Dave. He's the gay Texan who writes me love poems uh, on his site, Stalking Martin Sargent. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. It's, uh, it's great to know that at least one person out there is thinking of me on my very special day. 
All right, why don't we take a look at the birthday card that Dave the Gay Stalker sent me. Here it is. Uh, it's me and Dave, me and Dave basking in the glow of Jesus. It came with the, the note, imagining you celebrating your birthday in your birthday suit, I remain your humble gay stalker. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Jesus. I'll, uh, I'll put that on my refrigerator next to all my unpaid parking tickets. And uh, you know what, though? My parents, they actually sent me a Yahoo greeting. It took them, like, all morning to, morning to figure out how to do this. But boy, was it worth it. Thanks, Mom and Dad, for this. Yeah, isn't that great? My parents are so unfamiliar with the Internet that they're still astounded that things like this exist. All right, what you're looking at is the only use my parents have ever gotten out of a $1,000 computer. Thanks very much. They didn't even email it to me. They thought that they could email it to me by just writing Mar Marty at Tech TV, and it would get there. They didn't realize there's like a formula. That's not my email. Is that all you got from them? Was just that e-card? Yeah, and that, that lung medication I've been asking for since I was a kid. Thanks, Mom and Dad. <laughs> Finally got over that. Hey, tonight's show is choice. I'm telling you. First up, we've got two guys who made it their mission to drink at every hard liquor serving bar in Seattle. In other words, my heroes are on the show tonight. <laughs> Plus, uh, fans of Tech TV might already recognize Kat Schwartz. Well, she's here to explain how she accidentally posted nude pictures of herself on the Internet. And our girl gone wired, Lena So, studies Muay Thai kickboxing when she's not attending church. Huh. Oh, uh, you Star Trek fans. You know, Star Trek fans, they're not ghosts but they frightened the tea Earl Grey hot out of me. So when I heard they were convening in Las Vegas, I sent our ghost hunter, Scott Harriet, down to investigate. Let's see what he found. As time moves forward through this and many other galaxies, the Star Trek faithful, along with those apparently looking for a deal on a Jimmy Durante photo, continue to congregate and yak about all things Trekkie, purchase memorabilia, and mentally scar their children. But one burning question remains. Have the Klingons gotten a raw deal? Do you feel that the Klingons in any way have gotten a bad rap? Well, considering that their original uh, definition was everything that humans hate about themselves, I think they've actually come a long ways. What is bad rap? Uh, bad rap is this. I went to the store and I went blah, blah, blah. But that's another I got area. It. You are bad because you are white. Some <laughs> and they like to sing. <laughs> well, we've been doing Star Trek checks now for over 10 years. Say that three times real fast for me. Okay. We've been doing Star Trek... No, say Star Trek checks three oh. times real fast for me. Would they listen to Metallica more than Sammy Hagar? I would think uh, Sammy Hagar more because um, it has more meaning. That uh, visit the facility. Can I interest you in a piece of gum? Negative. Your favorite human band, I would probably say would be uh, like Metallica or something. See, that's what I thought. Did you not notice that everybody came over to the Klingons? Did you not notice they all wanted their pictures with us? Yeah, the beer. Did you not notice that everybody, well, we don't have anything now. So it's not so a, kind of, it's not acne. Kind of, no. It's not. We have tried Clearacel. It does not work. Uh, Klingon checks don't have a higher rate of bouncing, but the acceptance of them is much more forceful. The Borg are worse than the Klingons. Oh, yeah. Are you going to be a Keep an eye out. You know how it is? A, a few bad eggs spoil the, uh, the barrel. Is that how you say it? I, I like some of the explain how they go from not having it to having it. What, the ridges? Yeah, how they go from one generation to the next. Derm abrasion. OK. It's not one of those on. alien creatures latching onto your oh, forehead no. waiting to emerge out of your It's all God. me, baby. I think it's time they had their own series. <laughs> the loudest ship in any fleet! So even though they're a little loud and their foreheads could be used as cheese graters, I came to respect and appreciate the Klingons in all of their glory. The original Nomad Pro? Yeah. They've got it back here. Great. Right, right back. There you go. You found it. I love these humans so easy. Not bad. Uh, set phasers on fun because Scott's got more from the convention coming up in Star Day next week sometime. I don't know. So after the break, uh, two guys who get drunker than anyone except maybe Laura sitting at home with a handle of gin watching a Nora Ephron movie marathon. Stay with us.
My next two friends are great Americans in the tradition of Lewis and Clark. They set out on a mission to drink at every bar in Seattle and chronicled their journey online. Please welcome the drunkards from 570bars.com, Brandon Amancio and Jason Vanny. Hey, fellas. Hey. hey. How are you? So first of all, congratulations. This is just great. But uh, how is the cirrhosis of the liver? It's, it's doing pretty good. Yeah? It's much better since the uh, liver transplant. Good. Good to hear. How did this noble quest begin? Well, what happened was I was reading through one of the local Seattle weekly indie papers, and I saw that there was a listing that said there were 570 bars in the city. I thought, has anyone ever drank at all of them? And I rather stupidly mentioned it to Brandon a couple days later, and he said, no. So we did. And were you drunk at the time? Were you drunk at the time that you read the article? No, I was not. But we were drunk when we started, sort of. <laughs> we went out to have food, ordered drinks, and then we're like, well, what the hell? We got one done. <laughs> so what were the rules of the little competition here? The bars all had to be in the city of Seattle. They had to have a full liquor license because Washington State has beer and wine and then full licenses. So we had to get real liquor. Uh huh. And there had to be some place you could go specifically to have booze. They had to be able to give you liquor without bringing you a menu or requiring a reservation or anything like that. Wow, that's so awesome. So those were the three rules. You guys are like Vasco da Gama or something like that, going to bars. <laughs> so how long did it take to, go, to have all these drinks at all these bars? I mean, 570 bars, how long did it take? Uh, the entire quest took approximately one year. In fact, we were able to finish it uh, within 45 minutes of our one-year anniversary. A uh, huge event, great fun. Uh, it required going to approximately three to four bars a night, three or four times a week. It really did become a, another full-time job. Yeah, did you, I mean, how did you get to work in the morning? Um, carefully. Yeah. Are there really only 570 bars in Seattle? I mean, there's more Starbucks than that. It seems like a small number. Well, I mean, that was part of the reason why we decided to do bars instead of coffee bars. Just the, the sheer ease of the project. That would have been unhealthy to drink all that coffee. I know. We would have been up all night. And... So, and you guys decided to build a companion website to the Quest. Why did you do that? Well, one of the, as we started to do the Quest, we decided that there might be people who would be interested in it. And since we were going to all of the bars, we decided that we should write reviews as we went along. So what we did was we posted all the reviews as we went, as long as journal entries, rants, upcoming events, things like that. Anything we thought somebody might be interested so in. So it's like an alcoholic blog. Uh, <laughs> Uh, while we did use the blog as an engine, uh, it's not like a regular blog. Most of them are kind of vain and stupid, but ours is relevant and useful, and, <laughs> and you might actually find it interesting. Did, did you get sponsors to this? Who paid for all these drinks? It must be very expensive after a while. Well, we started out paying for everything, but we realized pretty quickly that that was going to be very expensive. So I came up with the idea that perhaps we could present it nicely to some of our friends and say, hey, you could just come out, buy us a drink, and we'll mention you on the website or something. Uh, and they fell for it. As you recorded the events online and the quest went on, did people sort of join in on the quest, kind of like in Lord of the Rings? Well, actually, what we would do is, as we had big events coming up, we would post that we would be at such a place at such a time. And one of the big events was Pioneer Square, which is a big joint cover, seven bars in a night kind of mm -hmm. place. And we're standing around waiting for waiting for people to show up and we're talking with two bartenders that we met uh, on the quest and they were going to take us around to their old haunts and I look over and I see this really good looking girl kind of walking towards us. She's a ways off so I, I turn around, I'm chatting, I look back and she's much closer and I'm kind of confused. Turn back around and chatting a little more and then I, uh, and then I, and all of a sudden she's there and she's like, oh my god, are you, are you the 570 bar guys? And we're <laughs> no like, yeah, she's like, I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> I, I, I had no idea we had a biggest fan. Yeah, it's, it's like a, it's like a, it's a flash mob for low life. So, you, you know, 570 <laughs> bars. That's 1,914 drinks in a year. I'm not all that impressed, to be honest with you, fellas. In fact, I could do that in a week. In fact, I've already started. Take a look at my progress. Uh, yeah, Cosmopolitan extra line. <laughs> Uh, I'm 
I'm sorry. I thought that came with a cherry. You see Adam boys, a couple lightweights. They saw we pick it down here in San Francisco. Where are all the bitches at? Eh? Yeah, what do you think about that, you panty ways? So you guys up for the challenge? You want to come down here to San Francisco and have a bar off? <laughs> Bring it. Yeah, we'll look at, it, look at it. They're, they're quaking with fear, man. You can't out trick me. Oh, but yeah, hey. come on. <laughs> 570? What, has San Francisco got like 200, 230 <laughs> for all those people? Come uh, on. Like in Chinatown alone, man. Hey, thank you so much for being here. Brandon and Jason, congratulations. You're doing great work. Thank you, man. All thank right. you. Their adventures and bar reviews are online at 570bars.com. Check out all the links at techtv.com. Slash unscrewed. All right, check it out. My friend Kat Schwartz is next, and maybe she'll even take her shirt off. Take it all off, baby. <laughs> You know my next friend as the vivacious co-host of Tech TV's Call for Help. Well, she's here to share her story of how one sunny afternoon she played dress-up, took pictures, and woke up to find her boobies posted all over the internet. <laughs> all over. Kat Schwartz, welcome to Unscrewed. What's, What's up, up Marty? How are you doing? How are you doing, yeah. So, Kat, yes. Kat, your breast is were all over the internet. What happened here? Oh, my goodness. I know. It was quite a shock. I'm glad to tell yeah. you. How did this happen? How did they get All up right. there? I mean, so uh, one day I took some pictures with one of my friends and I ended up taking my shirt off because there are pictures that I've actually wanted to take for a long time. And it's just sort of images of my body as it is now for my husband, whoever he may be, when we're like 60, 70. Look how hot I was uh -huh. when I was 26. Check this out, baby. So it's art. It's art. Yeah, can, it's can, art. Can we take a look at the offending picture? Here it is offending? right here, everyone. All right. Yeah, you can see how it's kind of blurred All out right, there. All right, so let me tell you what cigarette. happened here, Marty. So uh, I have a blog, right, catchwords.com. And uh, on my blog, I post pictures and I post information, just a regular blogger would do. And so I took part of these images and cropped them through EarFram View, which is this program uh -huh. that's like an image viewer or whatever. And our audience as techno savvy as they are figured out how to redeem the rest of the file by opening it a certain You're way. You're kidding Photoshop. me, that's what happened. So you didn't mean to Dude. actually post the nude picture no. up there at all? No, 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 no. I didn't. And there was all these rumors, ah, oh, she meant to post it, whatever. But the fact is, is that if I was going to post them, I would have picked better pictures. I took 400 images that day. Uh-huh. But, so uh, there's better ones than that. You're saying that you did, <laughs> you did not do this on purpose to draw attention to yourself, to increase the traffic no. to your site. Oh, this was purely no. an accident. Although I got about two million hits. You got the two last million two hits. Weeks, yeah. Oh my God, I gotta do this. There's my blog there. <laughs> I know you do. Look, so there. So that's I, normally I post images like that, right? Just cute images. Hi, I'm Cat. This yeah. is what I do. Her. Look, and then I posted that one right there after it happened because everyone was. Well, not everyone, but a lot of people were rude, and they were just being brats, and they, you know, if they had actually seen me in person, they would have never have said half the things they said in the comments, so I'm, I turned them off, but I, I gave that picture, you know. Kat, I don't know, sounds to me like you were asking for it here. I mean, your fans are hardcore geeks. They can smell a breast from two gigabytes <laughs> away. Of course they're going to find this stuff. Well, you know, it, it really hadn't crossed my mind. I just felt like when I cropped my eyes and I cropped the top of my head that I just felt really sexy and I felt great in those images and I felt like just the cropped parts would have been enough but you're right they could smell it and I love the fact that they actually redeemed the file although yeah, it was although you know I didn't mean to do it but the fact is is that I love that our audience is that savvy that they actually figured but did you get in trouble for all of this I mean no. you're sort of a public figure here and you were all over the <laughs> company yes I know and um, <laughs> you can say that on your show we'll bleep it okay um, <laughs> That's Can't cool. say that on Call for Help, yeah. can you, Ken? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't, Marty. Can I say it's a cute company? Uh, I right. like it's that. Okay. Um, no, yeah, it was, and <laughs> company was pretty harsh because 
people on there are mean. Yeah, they And are. it's just, you know, they're a bunch of nerds sitting around. I imagine what they looked like. But the fact is, is that Pud, from that site, he emailed me and he's like, Kat, do you want me to take this down? And I was like... Uh -huh. At first, I wasn't going to. Same reason why I didn't turn my comments off for a long time. I was just going to leave them up because I felt like this is a place where people can come and talk. They have the right to their opinion. But then it was, it was just so rude. I was like, yeah, take it down. Well, so now that yeah. you've called them all nerds on national TV, I'm sure they'll be much nicer well, to no, you. Well, no, there's... <laughs> I love the geeks, the nerds. They can, you know, take it. So, so do you regret the fact at all that the boys all over America have printed out your picture and stuffed it under their mattress? <laughs> You did? That, no, I didn't do that. Are you sure? Joey the intern did. Oh. <laughs> That's a scary thought. Um, <laughs> okay. No, I mean, oh, whatever, it happened. All right, Kat, thanks so much for coming on the program and sure. clearing the air, letting us know Give how it all kiss. happened. Mm. Okay. Oh, isn't that special? He's my friend. Yeah. Hey, you can watch Kat every weekday, 3 p.m. Eastern time on Tech TV's watch. Call for Help. Awesome program. you got to check it out. All your computer problems solved. All right, D Tip and Laura, how can you show the kids at home how to find more than this what they ever good. dreamed of on the net? Like perhaps a pick of Laura's princesses? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's really, they're truly cute there, Marty. But see, I don't let my lovelies uh, be taken by photographers. Sculptors, maybe, but not, not the photogs. All right, Kat. You're not into yeah. it, huh? I'll pose nude for the, you know, the artisans and whatnot, right. but not the... Do, do, do. Gotcha. Kevin, so how did you find out about this? Well, a friend of mine actually emailed me the picture. Right. And I had to verify it with my friend, so I sent about 60 or 70 of guys. Of course, you have to, I was right? Getting it out there. <laughs> and uh, yes, it is true, they did verify it. And actually, what <laughs> does happen is it's actually a little tricky th uh, thing here. Let me show you. I actually took a picture of Marty. Check this out. Uh, this is uh, Marty and I took this picture. <laughs> Um, and what I've done here is I've, I've cropped the image, and take a look at this here. This is the cropped image that we've done, just like Kat did. But right. what happens is, is when you save the image, it actually saves a thumbnail in what's called the EXIF info. The EXIF. The EXIF. So that's the thumbnail right there that's, that's stored in this information. Now, there's no way to get rid of that unless you manually strip it out, because if you crop it, it's still going to be there hidden behind the scenes. Now, a lot of other information is also stored. Check this out. It tells you the type of camera that it was shot with, the Nikon D100. All this information is hidden behind the scenes. So what happened is, when she put this cropped image up on her website, users were able to open this up in Photoshop and then view the thumbnail within Photoshop and actually see that image and then extract it out from there. Right. So what you have to do is just, this is a free application called Photo Studio. You open the image up, and then you go into image here, and then you go into thumbnail, and you choose create inline, and you click that right there, and then click OK. And now if we scroll over here and click on the thumbnail, you'll notice that the thumbnail is the same as the original. And then we save that out to the hard drive, and then no more nude picture of Marty. And you got to make sure that uh, you got to make sure that you don't mix them up and accidentally post the original one, and then you're left in the same predicament. Exactly, exactly. It's very important to get this free utility, something worth downloading for sure. Very good. Well, Marty, does that clear it up? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. But I think it would have been more fun if the whole thing remained a sultry mystery. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can we see the photo again uh, of, of me next to Cat? Because yeah. I think that we're twins. Let's take a look at this. Let me uh, yeah. <laughs> I look great. Yeah, you did good. I did pretty good. Yeah, I look way hotter than my you. My picture's not airbrushed. Uh. <laughs> uh, all right, now it's time to unwind with Girls Gone Wire. Tonight's babe is a model of Chinese and Belgian descent, Lena So. And I can tell Lena is a real firebrand because every single sentence on her site ends with at least one exclamation point, such as this one. It drives me AWOL when people talk during my blockbuster nights. I like to watch my movies in peace because I get very into it. Ha <laughs> ha! And I also hate it when people leave those two-inch stickers on their school binders. I know it's weird, but the thought of it makes me cringe. Ha <laughs> ha, lol. Whoa. Slow down, Lena. Lena's favorite color is pink because it's just like her. Feminine, stylish, fun, and loud. Ha <laughs> ha. Despite her model's body, Lena always finds herself snacking on crap. In her own words, my favorite snack is Mickey D's French fries, yummy, and Philly cheesesteak sandwiches, mmm, mmm, filet mignon. Ha <laughs> ha. Ever since Lena started her website, she has been modeling and traveling twice as much. So go to lenaso.com for autographed merchandise and lots of enthusiasm. Hey, more fun after the break. Better stick around. But first, here's another reason to get that darn broadband. Ricky, hey, come here. <laughs> Turn off the fan. <laughs> Thanks.
rest of those drugs, Brandon, Brandon Amancio, Jason Vanny, the lovely Cat Schwartz, D-Tip Laura, and all you suckers for watching. Latest, fool. <laughs> Nail on the hand of Tech TV. I'm Martin Sargent. As always, riding shotgun is the woman I've really grown to accept, Laura Swisher. Laura, how are you doing? How are you doing, Laura? Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm actually a little annoyed today, Martin. What's up? Well, you know the do not call registry? Yeah, the thing that if you don't want people telemarketing, the telemarketers, you sign up. Yeah, right. Well, great. I think that we should have one for ex-boyfriends and or girls or guys that you meet at bars. What, what, are you, what, what are you talking about? Why? Well, apparently one of my ex-boyfriends tracked me down and is now calling me incessantly, and it's like we broke up for a reason. Well, uh, may, maybe that's because he loves you. Well, maybe he should get the idea that we broke up for a reason. Maybe he calling keeps me. calling you because he realizes that he's the guy for you, and you're making a terrible mistake by not being with him. Well, maybe if he understood what love was, and he would know maybe. if you really love someone that you know no. she was a part. With me. No, he I knows. Mean, he knows that your life. He knows that your life would be a whole lot better if he were still in it. Why don't you put yourself in his shoes, you <laughs> smug bitch? <laughs> wow. God. Coming up on this very show, which I will go home and watch by myself unless that hoe starts answering the phone. <laughs> two of the world's toughest midget wrestlers are gonna rumble right here in our studios. Here's one. That's the mighty meatball. And whoever wins that match between those two, I will take on the winner, and I will show no mercy. <laughs> yeah, I intend on ending a midget's wrestling career on this very show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, Kevin Rose, the dark tipper, will show us how to crack into other people's wireless networks so you can steal free internet pretty much anywhere you go. And we'll reveal something so diabolical about Laura that I pray her mother isn't watching. <laughs> But first, <laughs> let's start this night off with a game of Search Spurts! Search Spurts! Search Spurts! All right, here's how it works. Search Spurts! I'll choose a number between 1 and 100 billion, then our two contestants will pick a word or combination of words that they believe will get a hit count closest to my number using Google. For example, I choose 5 million. One contestant chooses Dianetics and gets only 149,000 hits. The other chooses Pizza and gets 4,990,000 hits, which is closest to my number, 5 million, so that person would win. Do we all understand the rules? Good. Our contestants tonight are returning champion Stephanie from StephTheGeek.com and a newcomer, V.I. Lane. All right, Stephanie from StephTheGeek.com, you've won all of our previous Search Spurts games. Are you ready to defend your title? I am. Are you in your bathtub right now? Yes, I am. Are you not afraid of getting electrocuted? No, no, it's okay. I Hopefully it won't happen, but... Would you like to spend a weekend at my cabin on Lake Tahoe? You have wireless internet? Yes, I do. I'll think about it. All right. And by Elaine from OrangeLipstick.com. Why orange lipstick? Why not something like blue testes? <laughs> it's actually a very obscure literary reference to Robert Smith from The Cure. Oh, I guess I'm not so literary. <laughs> Isn't that I, I, I guess I didn't study The Cure <laughs> no, when I was out. getting Everyone my master's degree secret. in literature. All right, ladies. <laughs> are you ready to play? Yes. All right, I'm yes. going to pick a number, and you both say a word or phrase that you think will get closest to that many results in Google. You got it? All right. The number that I choose tonight is 1,450,000. You'll have up to 10 seconds. Fire away a phrase or word at any time. Go. Camelot. Okay, Violin, you said Camelot? Yes. Camelot. Ha <laughs> ha, Camelot! Oh, God, what is this autocomplete crap? You got 1,050,000 hits. Wow. That ain't bad. That ain't bad at all. You're 400,000 shy. Let's see if our reigning champion, Steph the Geek, can do any better. Steph, what's your word or phrase? I said fern. Fern? Like Fern Gully? Yeah. It's a great movie. You got 1,300,000 wow. hits. Oh, oh my by God. a margin of 250,000, Steph the Geek, you are still the champ. Yeah. This is amazing. She it is keeps amazing. winning. You know what that makes me feel like? This. Yes! 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 
<laughs> okay, that was weird. You've just won a DVD of The Dream Master, The Erotic Invader. This was highly recommended by Eugene, our creepy intern. <laughs> And you've also won another autographed picture of me. For the collection, all right. You sure do. You can sell these on eBay for quite a bit. You can buy your own wireless network. <laughs> hey, thank you both so much for playing. Now the winner moves on to the next round next week. Congratulations, Steph the Geek. You're going to get to talk to me again, baby. Thanks for playing Cert Spurts. Thanks, and be Mike. sure to visit our Ladies of the Cam websites. You can find links to their sites at techtv.com slash unscrewed. That was the best search for it's ever. <laughs> hey, stick around, because midget wrestlers Blix and Meatball are going to be here after the break to talk about life in the Micro Wrestling Federation and to show us some of their moves. But first, tonight's musical guest, Three Brain, with their smash internet hit, Threebrain.com if you want to see more of that video. Now to get the blood pumping once again, it's Girls Gone Wired. Yeah. Tonight's babe did some modeling, but at five foot five inches, her small stature caused big problems. So she did what any short model does. She moved to Japan. I present to you Amy Weber. On her resume, she lists her special skills as dancing, singing, motorcycling, horseback riding, rollerblading, snowboarding, gymnastics, and kickboxing. What? No computers? What a dork! Yes, Amy always loved the great outdoors, and as a teenager, she even used to race motorcycles. Yeah, it's all about the bicycle smile. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go to our website, techtv.com slash unscrewed, and learn how to make your bike make you smile. Or ask Laura. And that's tonight's Girl Gone Wired. All right, so the Dark Tipper is back trying to corrupt Laura to his evil ways. What are you guys up to now, huh? Well, yeah, Kevin, you're actually kind of geeking out on us with this tip. What are you showing us? Something with wireless internet access? I brought my second laptop, my Linux laptop uh -oh. today. We're getting uh -oh. really geeky. It's serious. I'm going to keep it simple, though. <laughs> Let's start off with the basics. How much do you pay for DSL right now? Uh, like 60 bucks. I'm going to show you how to get DSL for free. Zero dollars. Like completely free. Free, free <laughs> like free Slurpee day. Check this out. Free. This is, I have no idea where that came from. This is an Orinoco card. This is a wireless card. You're going to go and pick one of these up at CompUSA. That's the computer store. Right. And uh, you'll pay about 50 bucks for this. Uh -huh. And you can get this. Pays for, for itself then right in within the first week. month. Very Perfect. good. Uh, you get one of these either for your laptop or your desktop. And the second you get it, you just install it into your laptop right. or install it in your desktop. So put you the install, software and in there. And then boom, you've got wireless access. You have wireless access if you can connect to a wireless access point. Uh -huh. That's what you're looking for. So you're how looking do you know? for one of these hubs to find. Right. So what you do is you fire up a program here. This is a piece of software called Network Stumbler. Now, this is an open source piece of software. And if you notice here, there's three access points that we have access to. Right. Right. Now, what you want to do is you want to click on the access point. It's going to show you the connection that you have, how, how good a signal strength that you have. Now, notice that there's one here with a lock next to it. So what you got to do is you have to fire up, well, you can fire up a program called Air Snort. Now, I have to tell you, though, this application I'm about to show you, it's open source and it's free to use. Right. You can fire it up. There's no problem with that. The problem with it is what it does is it actually cracks this, this encryption that people set up. Uh -huh. So it's going to break into other people's access points. Now, if you're using this on your own access point, you don't have to worry about that because you're just testing out your own encryption. Right. But if you're actually using this to steal other people's bandwidth, that's not a good thing. Now, when, when it does, like, crack, does it actually snort? Is that how it got the name? Like, you're trying to... And it's all... No, it, no. <laughs> it doesn't make any noises. It doesn't, but, 
But, no, it doesn't do that, but you can do that while I'm showing you the application right. if you like. I might. But one thing that it does do that's really cool is the reason they call it air snort is because it goes out and captures all the flying packets that are going across right. the air, looks at the packets. You just want to do the snort, I can tell. You just want to do the it snort. It looks at the packets and then it finds the these things called weak keys and it, it breaks that encryption. So let me show you the application right here. Right. Uh, again, you can choose a drop down here and choose the different types of cards that you have installed in your system. In this case, we have an Orinoco. And then we choose the network device that we're using to access this, the right. wireless LAN. And we click start. And when we click start, it's going to find those encrypted ones and then go out there and try to break them. Now, if you're a network administrator and you're thinking, uh-oh, because I mean, I'm showing right. a lot of people this right now. You can break into anybody's computer that you want. The thing to do is to change know, your thinking. key. Change your key. So if you have one of these at home or you go out and buy one or you have a friend that has one, because right. a lot of us do, uh, change your key at least a couple times a week. Otherwise, you're not going to uh, be able to allow people to break in. That's the, the safest way to keep that secure. Very good. So you people at home, if you want to check out how to do this, go to www.techtv. Why did I say www? Marty, do you have any idea? www. World Wide Web. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. You, you, you know, if uh, Kevin the Dark Tipper keeps hacking, he's going to end up in prison and find himself on the wrong end of another kind of dark tip. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, terrible. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> wee, wee. All right. Our next guests are two of the toughest sons of bitches you'll ever want to meet. Their names are Meatball and Blix, and they are two of the best little people wrestlers to ever set foot in the ring. Fellas, it's an honor to have you both here with us on Unscrewed. Yeah, Meatball and Blix. So, Meatball. Meatball. You are the reigning, the reigning Micro Wrestling Federation champion. How long have you held the belt? Since uh, the middle of May. Since the middle of May. And have you gotten a lot more chicks in that time? Does the belt help? The belt, it definitely brings extra chicks, but... But you, you had no problem before that, right? We never have problems with did, that. For you guys, did, did the internet play a role in you guys getting into wrestling? I mean, did this Micro Wrestling Federation even exist before the reach of the World Wide Web? It existed. But doesn't, people weren't watching it as much. Are, no. are most of the matches, I mean, I don't see these things on ESPN. Is the internet the main way that people watch you guys wrestle? Actually, right now... We're like in the bars and casinos. Uh huh. And uh, so you're going for the drunk crowds. Yeah. Yeah. All, it's all, starting to get bigger. It's more fun. <laughs> more, definitely more fun. It's always more fun when you're yeah. drunk, right? Drunk, all the drunk tales. chicks are easier. <laughs> That's right. Especially if you got the belt. Especially if you got the belt. All right. the tales of glory and stardom that are found on the Micro, Micro Wrestling Federation website. Do you use that to recruit new wrestlers? I mean, are there a lot of guys your size that are just clamoring to get in the federation? That's actually how I got into it. Really? You, you were just surfing around one night? Tell me the story. Well, it was by accident. I was actually searching for wrestling news, seeing the independent circuits and everything, mm -hmm. and I bumped into their website and typed on the message board that I'd been involved in it and wanted to get back in it, and a couple of days later, I got a phone call. And the rest is history. I mean, I've seen some of the pictures of you on that website, and i got to say, man, it's crazy what you do in the ring with all those aerial stunts and that whole feet on the neck thing. I mean, you, don't you get hurt? How do you prepare for this type of punishment besides drinking tequila? It's hard work. Just hard work? How, uh, how, how much do you constant, train? Constantly in the ring. Yeah. Every second that you have a free moment, just get in the ring, train constantly. You gotta, you gotta just work your back. So when you were a little kid, <laughs> did your like, parents drive you like 40 miles to the, 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 the Micro Wrestling Federation you know, coach every morning? Like, <laughs> Kind of like Carrie Strug's parents did? Not, not quite. So, so you, in all the, the, the professional wrestling, there's good guys and there's bad guys. Which one of you guys is the good guy and which is the bad guy? I'd be the good guy. You're the good guy? You're like the, the Hulk Hogan of the Micro Wrestling Federation? Actually, he's bad now, isn't he? That's how out of touch I am. I'm like the Undertaker. The Undertaker. He's a good guy now? Yeah. And you're a bad guy? Yes. What, what, what's so bad about you? I mean, every bad wrestler has like this devious backstory that made them so twisted. What's your backstory? Well, if you can insult tall people, they don't like it. <laughs> That's it. Such as The Rock, you know, the, thinking of the, the Rock. That guy's a wussy, isn't he? Meatball, yes. do you think you could take The Rock? Definitely. Definitely. You know, they, they should have made one of you guys the Scorpion King, not that putz. There's my Scorpion King right there. L little do the people know that they always underestimate us. I bet so they, they do. Don't know what's I coming. bet they do. What do you guys do when you're not in the ring wrestling? I sit at home. <laughs> That's all I do. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> Professional wrestling gets fake, right, man? But you guys, are you guys actually real? Are you really We're a real kicking deal. out of each other? Real deal. Really? Six stitches right there. Wow. You do all those aerial moves. You ever go off the top turnbuckle and like land on someone and like, you know, get really hurt? No. Look uh, at that. Look at the height you get, man. That's actually me on the mat. Oh, that's you on the mat. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's not as cool then. All right. Hey, you guys can find out more about Blix and Meatball and the whole Micro Wrestling Federation gang by going to microwrestling.com. And stick around, because after the break, Blix and Meatball are going to rumble. And then I'm going to kick the little ass of the winner. You can't handle this, Meatball. You can't handle me. I'm too pretty for you, schmutz. Yeah. I eat people bigger than you. Yeah, we'll see about that, man. You guys got to stick around. I'm going to kick his ass. But first, we think this is the perfect little comedy bit about technology and comedy. We call it the lighter side of Linux. Enjoy. <laughs> Computers are like air conditioners. They stop working properly if you open windows. I can't believe I paid 20 bucks for this. I don't get it. That one killed at Linux World. Linux sucks. Oh my Jesus. From the Micro Wrestling Federation, I give you Blix. Okay, I want a good, clean fight. You both ready? All right, go to your corners. I want you to come out when you hear the bell. And now marking the round is the fair and beautiful Laura Swisher, everyone. Laura Swisher. This could be the final beautiful lady either of these wrestlers see, because one guy might die tonight. And here they go. Blix. Oh, they start out strong. Clearly, Meatball's got the upper hand early. It's at least two times. Oh, my God, he flipped him right over on his back. Will Blix be able to recover from that move? Come on, Blix. Come on. Oh, he's obviously, he's obviously thrown. He's obviously disoriented. Oh! My God, he's no match for the mighty Meatball. No match whatsoever. Oh, he's putting all of his 300 pounds on his chest. Why does he count? Clearly, over there. clearly Meatball didn't like that. Clearly Meatball didn't like the referee on that one. Oh my God, this has already been a harrowing experience here. What can we do? Suplex him! Suplex him! Oh, he's throwing him around like a rag doll! Or a little person. All right, that's the end of round one. Everyone, back to your corners. Meatball, how do you think round one went for you? Great, he's nothing. And if you want to see more of this, go to wickedgesture.com. Laura, come on in and announce round two, because we are ready to get underway with round two of the championship micro wrestling federations right here in Unscrewed. Are we ready? Let's get down. Come on, battle. Blix has definitely got to step up. He's definitely got to step up. He got tossed around. Oh my god. I don't see how Blix has any chance against this man. This man is a brute. He's a beast. Oh, he goes down again. Jagerbomb. Blix clearly needs to bring a foreign object into the ring. Oh, he drops the hammer. He drops the hammer. We got a one. We got a two. Oh, no, he's up. That was only two. That was only two. Only two. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh. Six. Oh. Come on, guys. We need a pin right here. Blix, get him! Oh, Jesus! One, two, three! That was in before the bell rang. Anyone can see that. All right, there you have it. There you have it. And still, Micro Wrestling Federation Champion. Pandemonium had broken loose here on the set of Unscrewed. All right, so that looked like a lot of fun. That's why when we come back, I'm going to prove my manhood by getting in the rat with both Blix and Meatball, and I'm going to kick some midget ass, man. You're not going to want to miss it. Stick around, but before all that, a mystery. The 
double life of Laura Swisher. Every sidekick has a secret. All right, stick around because we've got Henry Kissinger right after the break. Don't go anywhere. I got to hit the head. Sure. Parched. You all right? You need some. No, no, no. No, go ahead. No, I'll, no. We can still, we can still no. Go. Kiss and drink and a beer. I'll go get some more. One day, Martin Sergeant. One day. So welcome back. Before we start this wrestling grudge match, I wanted to thank our guests, Steph the Geek, Via Lane, and these two fools, Blix and Meatball, who I'm about to kick the asses on! Yeah! Okay, well. I'm Martin Sargent. Clearly, I'm the guy. Duh. Yeah, I'm pretty much the man. Get with it. Yo, what's up? That's rad, man. What's up? You've never seen anything like that. Blingo. Blingo? Unscrewed. <laughs> hey there, and welcome to Unscrewed, the only show that has a higher blood alcohol content than it does Nielsen rating. I'm Martin Sargent. Here she is, the woman who holds my hair in puka shell necklace when I vomit after a long night of pounding fuzzy navels, my drinking buddy, the Swish. Yeah. Laura, you reek of alcohol right now. I do not. You better come. Hey, let me, let me take this opportunity to introduce tonight's first guest, a bottle of wild turkey straight Kentucky bourbon, 80 proof. And here's why she's with us tonight. Uh, I often feel like I'm much funnier and more relaxed after I've had a few toots of the booze. So the producers and Laura and I, we were talking, kicking it around. We thought maybe the show would be a lot better, a lot funnier, if I just went ahead and got loaded for the next 30 minutes. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going strutting with the gobbler, baby. Uh, <clears throat> of course, uh, this little experiment in television science could go very, very badly. So you all really should watch this entire show as I get drunker and drunker and drunker. I may start tap dancing on the deck. He's on the desk. I, I might it. projectile vomit over an interviewee. I, I may <laughs> try to hook up with the swish. Try that also. You never know. I'm a loose cannon when I dip into the sauce. Of course, there's much more to the story than all that. This is Tech TV after all. So we've got a bunch of these. These are, these are breathalyzers. They're supposed to tell you if your blood alcohol level is above the legal limit so you don't do something so boneheaded as driving drunk. And uh, to ensure that our tests are accurate, we invited a California Highway Patrol officer to make sure we're doing everything right and to check our results. Of course, inviting a cop in here is kind of like inviting a DEA agent into a meth lab. We're not sure what we're doing, but there he is over there. Hello, uh, hello, Ossifer. How are you doing tonight? Outstanding. Yeah, you look real thrilled to be here. This was such a mistake. Hey, tonight's show uh, would be stupendous even if we remained sober. Speaking of which, oh, yeah. woo! Yeah. Gobble gobble. <laughs> we've got uh, we've got Ghost Hunter Lloyd Auerbach here to show us the high tech gadgets he uses to track poltergeists. And tonight's Girl Gun Wire makes me want to better myself, just like I want to better Laura. What? <laughs> That's impossible. No, better, better myself. This is why I was okay. hunting around for you on the Tech TV Personals website, and I'm pretty sure I finally found the perfect guy for you. Oh, it's not that German contortionist, is no, it? No, 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 no. He was a diamond in the rough, but no, it's not him. You see, Laura, 
I know why you didn't like him. Yeah, he wore later hosen and had a dagger strapped to his thigh. No, it was because he was too old for you. You see, Switch, I've got you figured out. It's coming to my really? attention that you're into the younger boys. That's true. Especially if they have brooding, dark, smoldering sides. That's right. And uh, because I want you to be happy, I've gone online and I found you your perfect man. Oh. He goes by the name... Dark Sider. Mm -hmm. Dark Sider. Kevin Rose? No, that's Dark Tipper. Oh, yeah. He's a 22-year-old Taurus, a high school grad from Indiana who enjoys air, food, shelter, and white cotton panties. Nice. You want dark and brooding? How's this for dark and brooding? The last great book Dark Sider read was How to Eat and Skin a Human Corpse, mm -hmm. a survival guide for working at Walmart. <laughs> the celebrity most re resembles meatloaf, <laughs> and uh, if he could be anywhere at this moment, he says he'd be dead. So what do you think? He's young, he's dark, he's definitely brooding. Do we have a love match? I think I, think I might pass, Marty. You're going to have... Oh, Jesus, I worked so hard on this, Laura. Well, not you know, young enough for you? Is that probably not, not young enough? not young enough. It's just that I, I really don't think that we should be making fun of Walmart at all. It's an American institution. <laughs> all right, I'm not, I'm not... Okay, I accept that, but I'm not giving up on you. And neither should any of you. If you, uh, you can find a match for yourself or for the Swish in a matter of minutes, all you need to do is visit us at techtv.com slash unscrewed and scroll down to where it says personal of the day. Click on the hottie du jour. Today it's sinful lush. Fill in the blanks. Holding hands in the rain is sexy. Kissing in the rain is sexier. I agree, baby. I want to click on that. And you'll be taking the Tech TV personal site, personals.techtv.com. So sign up now and get laid the unscrewed way. All right, hold on. I'm just getting warmed up for the breathalyzer test coming up in a bit later in the show. This is a good idea. I don't think so. You want one of these? No, Martin, I don't get drunk. All I right. do yoga. You do yoga. All right. Up next, Professor Paranormal Lloyd Auerbach is here to tell us if the Tech TV studios are haunted. I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Stick around. you got to watch this. I'm going to make an ass of myself. <laughs> Welcome back. Our next friend founded the Office of Paranormal Investigations, and he makes a living studying all things ghostly. Welcome to Unscrewed, the fearless Lloyd Auerbach. What's up, man? How you doing? Lloyd, do you see dead people? No, I feel them sometimes, though. Would you like a shot of wild turkey? No, thanks. I'm a rum guy. <laughs> a rum guy. How did you get into this business of uh, hunting ghosts? Well, it's something I've been interested in since I was a little kid. Too many of the wrong TV programs, mm -hmm. Twilight Zone, Star Trek, you know, all those dark shadows, things like that. You actually have a degree in this. I got a degree in parapsychology from John F. Kennedy University over in the East Bay, and it's one of the few degrees actually offered in the field. And I also have kind of taken it upon myself to learn other things, such as magic and psychic entertainment. So I'm also huh. a professional entertainer. In fact, I was actually entertaining at a release party for a game called Femme Fata uh, me, Fatal Frame last week. So they also have a department of uh, JFK conspiracy theory studies at JFK University? Well, you know, the strange thing is that they never really touched on JFK at JFK University. <laughs> it was just named after him. And I've never met a single conspiracy theorist over at the university. Could How you long give, like, have a you minor? been so, a conspiracy theory? Probably. Yeah. No, not in ghost hunting. Like a minor, if you, instead of majoring it, could you get a minor? Well, the way it is right now, per parapsychology is not at the university anymore. Uh -huh. We don't really have it there. We do have interdisciplinary consciousness studies, looking mm -hmm. at human consciousness, and there are some folks who are learning classes, taking classes about that subject. So. What's the wildest ghost encounter? I mean, you've been, you've been chasing these things for a long time. What's the craziest, creepiest thing you've ever come across? Well, I've seen a lot of things move in some of the cases, but the, the craziest thing for me personally was actually being at the place called the Moss Beach Distillery and having a ghost sure. walk through me. Whoa. Oh, come on. Several times. How did that feel? Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good, like, like, whew. How like, do you know? Like, how, how well, do you know that it's not a breeze and it's a the ghost? Sensation, the sensation was, uh, we were actually doing a two-night in investigation. Right. We had a number of uh, psychics there. We had a lot of our equipment there. And I first started getting some readings on one of the pieces of equipment here, which, as it turned out, was the ice machine. That's one of the things we look at is <laughs> what other things give that off. But then I got the sensation that uh, it's kind of like standing in the surf and feeling like your whole body gets moved. Right. That moved through my body. And then it came from back to front, then from front to back, and then it was going back and forth. And I got the Pacing. sense... Pretty much. Uh, I got the sense that somebody was walking through me, that this woman was walking through me, and in my mind's eye, I got a picture of this woman. Yeah, Maybe that's kind of how I feel right now, Lloyd. <laughs> after, uh, you know, this was a distillery after all. You've been... I hadn't been drinking yet, but I did afterwards. So there's, there's countless ghost stories out there. What kind of tools do the pros use to hunt them down these days? Well, what we're really doing is using environmental tools to try to determine if there's something in the environment that connects to people's experiences, such as, I had that experience, was there something that, that actually could pick up energy around me at the same time? So devices like this, this, this first is, one. This uh, is a geomagnometer. Geomagnetometer. 
and measures the magnetic field of the Earth on a local level. The Earth gives off magnetic fields. And there have been studies over the last 20 years indicating that human beings react to localized magnetic fields from the Earth. In mm -hmm. fact, if it's high enough, people can hallucinate. There's a researcher up in Canada who has a helmet that'll pump magnetic fields into your brain and make you have near-death experiences and UFO abduction experiences and all sorts of other kinds of things. Lloyd, come on. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> You actually, you've used this and you've, you've sensed spirits by waving this around. Now, we're not around. sensing spirits. What we're doing is sensing energy that we try to connect to the people. There's nothing that can sense a spirit because there's nothing that can pick up the human mind or consciousness. In other words, I can't point this at you and pick up your mind because there's nothing that'll do that. Because it's f***ing blank Well, right there's now. that too. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's move to this camera. Uh, let, can we see this in action? This is a thermal camera. This is a thermal vision camera from FLIR Systems. We actually started using devices like this about 10 years ago in Whoa. a couple of cases. Whoa, that's really cool. We were, uh, we were actually looking for cold spots. People talk about feeling cold spots. We figured we'd be able to see the cold spots. Dude, I'm tripping. <laughs> Point it at my face. Let the people see me. Ah, look, I am the Messiah. <laughs> so you've been, you've been scouting around the studio here, the unscrewed set. Do, do yeah. you feel any vibes? Do you feel any... You know, it's funny, right before we started shooting the show, I started feeling something over by the audience. And I hadn't felt, I hadn't measured anything at all. Uh, I've been walking around with this third device earlier. Mm -hmm. And this is a magnetometer that measures a frequency that actually will pick up technology. So with too much tech, I'll pick things up. Uh, it'll certainly pick up the camera. Mm -hmm. And I started getting a sensation feel like I feel in a lot of the cases that's I'm That's my dressing room. And that's not where I got the reading, but. Oh, good. <laughs> Something weird was going on there. Well, I mean, see. something weird was going on. You actually think that there's a, there's a ghost well, in the know, studio? I got to tell you, I, the times that I've been here, I've been told by people who work here that there is somebody, a guy, who shows up apparently from time a to time. A guy who shows up apparently. Pepito, the se security guard, perhaps? <laughs> no, you know what this place used to be? Do, do you sense angry rabbits? This used to be a rabbit hutch. They used to only angry magicians rabbits here. Too. <laughs> So I want to play with this camera a little bit. Can we get scan out of this thing one more time? Because this is the, definitely the coolest thing. There's Laura. You know, with this camera, you can sense that people have silicone breasts or not. <laughs> you seriously can. Isn't that right, Lloyd? But they have to be naked. Yeah, you can also sense that people are going to go bald. Watch this. Uh, maybe not from right here, but you can definitely see my bald <laughs> spot. Well, maybe we can show it at Lloyd. <laughs> that would be a little bit too obvious. Yeah. Hey, Lloyd, thanks so much for being on the program. Thank that you. was great, and good luck. Have you ever actually seen a ghost, though? Not seen a ghost, felt them, seen things move, but I actually have not seen Moving a ghost. Moving through you, feeling yeah. pretty good. You sure you don't want one of these? Pretty sure. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> All right, for more otherworldly info, check out Lloyd's website. It's mindreader.com. You can get the links at our site techtv.com slash unscrewed. All right, this is getting to be really hard work. Let me tell you, you guys have no idea. I'll do anything in the name of science. <laughs> Stick around, Officer Christian Oliver of the California Highway Patrol is going to determine if I've already had too much to drink. We'll get my BAC up next, but first, enjoy another special moment in NASA history. And now it's time for another moment in NASA history. I don't even know what are you gonna go, what are you gonna do about it. I don't even know what what, what, what am I gonna do about it? Oh warm. Hey, welcome back. The sixth drink. I see Ooh. drunk people. Hey, have you ever stumbled out of a bar, slipped and fallen in the gutter, only to pick yourself up and wonder if you've had too much to drink? Well, these little things are supposed to help you figure it out by measuring the blood alcohol content in your body. They're similar in concept to what the police use. And we're going to give these a test and get this. We have a California Highway Patrol officer, Christian Oliver, here to administer a real police breathalyzer test. How are you doing, Oliver? Still not standing, how about yourself? So, for those people just tuning in, I've had, what, six shots in the last 20 minutes or so. In your professional opinion, am I drunk? When aren't you drunk? <laughs> <laughs> Thing with drinking is, obviously, if you've taken the six shots in 20 minutes, which might be a record, uh, you're building your alcohol uh, up and, and it's going in your bloodstream. Would you say that's a red flag? Definite red flag. <laughs> Um, you might not be at the peak of your, uh, at the highest point you can be, but you are working your way up to that. So uh, in time, 
you'll reach your people. I hope right, not, because right I'm now. going out tonight for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> right now I could smell on your breath. That would be one clue. Um, <laughs> but whether you're drunk or not, I'd have, you take you, I'd have to take you through a whole bunch of tests to really give you a professional opinion. But so so we'll how do you know? Do. When you pull someone over, I mean, can you always tell, like, with, with pretty good certainty that that person is going to blow above the legal limit? Martin. Always. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, why don't we test some of these things out? These are, these are the store-bought ones. You can get these for pretty cheap, about $30 or less. And uh, what, what's the official stance on these among the chips unit? CHP doesn't endorse products like these, uh, although they are a, a useful guide for people who may have had too much. Um, we ask that people that are designated drivers may tell their friends, hey, don't drink, and they do that. But how do you expect somebody okay. that's had too much? Right. That's, that's a good case in point. I just blew a .04. That is well below the legal limit. What is the legal limit? I should not be behind the wheel right now, man. No. Legal limits in California are .08 uh, blood alcohol level or above. But you can get taken to jail, as we've discussed, for being under that limit if you're displaying signs and symptoms of being under the influence of alcohol. So I just blew a .04 on that one. This is called the Safe Drive Static. I'm going to test this one out. What you do on this one, you just wait for these lights to go back and forth, and then uh, when they're done, I'm going to blow. And uh, what do you think I would blow right now? Just by the way I'm talking, kind of slurring my speech a little bit, obviously a bit If you, uh, <clears throat> if you have a penny under your, under your tongue. There's a lot of myths out there, just as there are urban legends and ghost stories. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, but I've heard that if you hold a penny under your tongue, the cops those, can't get you. Yeah, those don't count. And uh, it's kind of funny for us to see people attempt these things. They put cologne on their mouth. They'll try uh. mouthwash. They'll put pennies in their mouth. It's a great show for us, but, you know, <laughs> bottom line is we're going to still be you're doing gonna, you're our gonna get us, job. Huh? Well, I, I, this, again... I blew like a, a zero on this one, and clearly, I'm a little bit over that. So let, let's try the real thing. Let's see if what you guys use, when you pull someone over, you're suspecting them of having been drinking and driving. Mm -hmm. Let's see if what you have can actually catch me in okay. the act, all right? Due to your body weight and as many shots as you've taken already. You calling me fat? You, <laughs> no. The skinnier you are, the worse. So uh, you would definitely be over the limit. It's but just, what about experience? <laughs> I mean, can you build up a real tolerance to this? Because, you know, you've got the you experience. Know how I like to kick it. But it doesn't matter. It's all the same for all people. That You have a tolerance level, uh, you know, socially, you know, your, you know, your inhibitions come out, all that kind of stuff. You can handle them maybe better when you drink more, but you can't fool your biological systems. Yeah. So. Is it weird that I always weep <laughs> when, I, when I drink? I do the same thing. Yeah. Okay, so this is what would happen if I were to be pulled over by uh, Christian Oliver here, and uh, Christ, we I got. could go we to jail got for this. Let's couple see. couple seconds here. I'm a little nervous. My God, look at this thing. It looks like something a, a stormtrooper like would pull off his belt. I'm going to have you take a deep breath in because we're getting the air sample from the bottom part of your lungs. Blow, blow, blow. Keep going, 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 keep going. Keep. Are you a swimmer? Jesus and baby Jesus. All right. Let's see where you're at. So right here it says you're at a point oh five six. You got nothing on me, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> you, you started drinking 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Let's talk in about a half hour, an hour. We'll see where you're at. No, what's the legal limit in this state? It's point oh eight, isn't point it? Point oh eight, yes. Point oh eight is Marty the legal limit. Marty already asked that question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but seriously, what would you do in that situation if I blew a point what did I blow? 0 .056. 0 .056. I mean, what what could you do? I mean, I'm if you've told according me you've to had... the technology. According to the technology, yeah. I am sober. Okay. But, but clearly, it, I'm okay, a little. Okay. So mm. you've told you you've told me you've had six shots. Okay. Well, I wouldn't tell you that if you pulled me over. <laughs> I thought we were on a trust basis here. <laughs> no. We're like, yeah, I you know, I, I played around friend. in the golf, had one with the pals. So you would tell me you only had one shot? I'm yeah. so disappointed. How do you guys give this yeah, guy a show? I have show? a question for you. Let's say, let's say I'm driving, and I see that you're behind me, and so I start swerving a little. You pull me over. At that point, do you frisk me? Would you like me to frisk you? Yeah. What would it take for me <laughs> no. to have you frisk me? No, no, no. No? Uh, if, I, if I drove through a stop sign without stopping with that? I'm sure we could work out something. <laughs> what is this? Love line? Come on, let's move on here. All right, 
this is serious stuff. We're joking around about it, but there's a message out here, and you want to give that to the viewers right now. Drinking and driving is effed up, man. Go. Yeah, definitely drinking and driving. We ask that for people that uh, are going to go out and drink to designate a driver beforehand. And, uh, you know, we talk about it right now, you know, driving home and all that kind of stuff. The worst off, you know, you could do when you're drinking is what you take a taxi, pay 20 bucks. It's better than paying the, uh, you know, estimated $11,000 you'd pay for a DUI trial uh, and that whole uh, issue. And then there's really no cost that you can put on somebody's life for taking it, for being under the influence of alcohol and killing people. Word is born. Hey, Thank man, you. thanks a lot for being here. Cops are cool. Wow. I never thought. Hey, uh, for more information on responsible drinking, head to the <laughs> chp.ca.gov. Can you believe it? I totally spoofed these guys. I fooled them. <laughs> I fooled them. Hey, if you like breast <laughs> If you like breastuses and you want to see me throw up, why don't you stay tuned? But first, it's another glimpse into Laura's secret life. The double life of Laura Swisher. Every sidekick has a secret. Yo, what's going on? Ready to start the show? Uh, yeah. High five. <laughs> Woo! Now, unscrewed news with Martin Sargent. And our top story tonight, I am very sad to report that this will be my last day as host of Unscrewed. But Laura Swisher will be replacing me immediately. What the f*** is this shit? Who's been messing with my teleprompter? Girls Gone Wired. Yeah! Tonight's babe was a former search spurts contestant who got her start modeling by working at Hooters. Here's Miranda Rocks. And boy, does she love Hooters. The website says she just adores boobs, her boobs, your boobs, that chick over there's boobs. You know, I, 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 I'm too effed up to care. Forget it. Check it out. Go to Miranda's website and experience her rough flair to get a glimpse of her beloved boobs. Yeah, I couldn't do anything with her tonight anyway. Hey, I would like to thank our friends Lloyd Auerbach, Wild Turkey, and my man, Officer Christian Oliver. And remember, folks, drink responsibly and never, ever, ever drink and drive. In fact, Laura, take my damn keys. Officer Oliver, come over here. Why don't you give me a field sobriety test? See if I can stand up, put your feet together. Hands down by your side. All you're gonna have you do is count on your fingers. Look at my fingers. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Go ahead. Say that again. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, four, two, three, one. Okay, let's try it again. One, two, three, four.